Tsunami reared up on her back legs and began running her talons along the wall. Look for something that'll move the boulder, she said. Clay breathed another burst of fire at the wall on his side. It looked like ordinary flat stone with a few fissures running from the ceiling to the floor. He scraped his claws through the cracks. Nothing happened except his claws tingle painfully. He tried sniffing around the boulder, then shoved it, but it wouldn't move any more than it had on the other side. I hope a sarflight's all right, he said, pushing away the sinking feeling in his stomach. I hope we really can open it from this side. We can, Tsunami said fiercely. It'll be a lever or something. She backed away a few steps, peering at the top of the boulder. Or magic, Clay said. What if it's a magic word or some kind of talisman we don't have? Tsunami stared at the boulder for a moment, frowning, then shook her head. They need an animus dragon to enchant it, but who even knows if those ever existed in the first place? The only thing Clay remembered about the lesson on magic and animus dragons was that they had power over objects. He remembered that because Starflight spent the rest of the day sticking his nose in the air and insisting that Nightwings are far more magically powerful than any mythical animus dragons. If they're so great, why do the Nightwings live somewhere mysterious where no one can find them? Clay had asked. Easy, Starflight had said loftily. It's because we have all the special powers, and we don't want to make regular dragons feel inferior. Even though they are, his expression implied. Clay snorted. Special powers like what? You know, Starflight had answered irritated. Telepathy, prognition, invisibility, hello. You don't have invisibility, Clay had argued. I mean, you're a black dragon. There's just hard to see in the shadows. That's not a power. I'd be invisible too if I were laying in a mud puddle. Yeah, well, Starflight had said. We can appear out of nowhere in the dark of night, swooping down as if the sky had just fallen on you. He had spread his wings majestically. Still not a power, Clay had said. That's just you guys being creepy. It is not creepy, Starflight had cried, his voice rising. It is magnificent and imposing. He had stopped and taken a deep breath. Besides, we're the only ones with visions of the future, so there. Well, I say, until the Nightwings come down off the clouds, all we have is rumors and a mumbo-jumbo prophecy that can mean anything. Then Clay had draped his nose off the rim of the ledge and peered across at Starflight. I mean, it's not like you've got any special mind powers, other than being way too smart. Well, I'll have powers eventually, Starflight had huffed. Maybe it's something Nightwings develop when they're older. You're supposed to be studying, not make fun of me. I wasn't making fun. Clay had protested. It was true, he had been trying to distract Starflight from studying, though. But of course, that never worked for long. Now, Clay scraped at the floor under the boulder. He actually missed Starflight. More than that, he was worried about him. How had Kestrel reacted when he, she couldn't find Clay, Tsunami, or Glory? She wouldn't hurt Starflight or Sunny. Would she? Suddenly, his claws caught on something. He flattened himself to the stone floor and peered underneath the boulder. A long, sturdy stick was jammed under the rock, holding it in place. Here, he whispered to Tsunami. He wrapped his talons around the stick and tried to yank it free. After a few tries, he realized it wouldn't come loose, but it did move from side to side. He tried sliding it sideways, and the boulder began to roll. He stopped quickly and looked at Tsunami. What if Webbs and Dune are waiting for us? Clay asked. They can't stop us, not all five of us, not if we all fight. The only way they kept us in was blocking the way out. Once it's open, we'll all be free. Tsunami let out a long breath. All right, Clay said, gritting his teeth. Let's do this. He shoved the stick as hard as he could. The boulder slowly rolled aside with a soft, scraping sound. The central cave came into view, and a shiver ran along Clay's tail at how strange it looked from the outside. A forlorn little shape was huddled by the river, trailing her talons in the water. She turned as the boulder moved, and her gray-green eyes went wide. Shh! Tsunami hissed quietly, bounding across the cave toward her. Sunny leaped up at the same moment and threw her wings open. She pressed her front talons to her snout, beaming. You did it! She whispered. Clay glanced at the tunnel that led to the Guardian's cave. Even if Tsunami was right that webs and dunes couldn't stop them, he didn't want to stick around and find out. Where are the others? He asked quietly. I'll get Starflight, Sunny said, heading for the study cave. Glory, I don't know. 
She glanced up at the stalactites. Clay felt a stab of worry. Was Glory all right? What if something happened to her while she was camouflaged? Would she have stayed invisible? What if she had fallen off a stalagmite or flown into an opcropping and hurt herself? What if... Right here, a voice whispered in his ear. Soft wings brushed his, and Glory's long shape shimmered into view. Her scales shifted from gray and black to a warm golden orange flecked with dark blue. You're all right, Clay said. In his relief, he twinned his tail around hers without thinking. She tensed, but she didn't pull away immediately like she normally would. Instead, she nudged him with her elegant snout. Of course I am, she said. I would have been fine on my own, you know. Perhaps she felt his wings droop, because she added, But thank you for doing insanely dangerous things for me anyway. Anytime, Clay said happily. Glory stepped back and nodded at where Starflight was staggering out of the tunnel from the study cave. Kestra was pretty furious, she said. I just had to listen to her from my hiding place. Those two got the brunt of it. Clay started forward, but Tsunami and Sunny were already on their side at Starflight. For a horrible moment, he thought Starflight was limping, that he'd been beaten or burned or terribly injured by Kestrel. Then he realized that Starflight was moving oddly because he was carrying a giant sack of scrolls on his back. Oh, no, you don't, Tsunami said, pulling it away from him. We don't need these. You have read them all a thousand times. We might need them, Starflight protested, yanking it back. They'll tell us what's safe to eat and all the different tribal customs and how to fly in bad weather. And you can tell us all those things, Clay said. We're going to anyway. But would I forget something important? Starflight fretted. <laughs> You'd be a lot more likable if you ever did forget anything, Glory said. The only thing that's important is getting out of here right now, Tsunami said, before Webbs and Dune wake up. And before Kestrel comes back, Glory added. What thrilling news. Kestrel is part of this. I've been looking for her for an awfully long time. The four dragonettes whirled around. Queen Scarlet was standing in the entranceway. Behind her, the tunnel was blocked by a row of sky wings in different shades of flame. All of them large, all of them breathing small spurts of fire, and all of them angry. But none of them looked as angry as the Queen of the Sky Wings.